We're ready to go. Except my clicker's not working now. <laughs> All right, so I wanted first to introduce the uh, advanced planning team so you know who the people are, and I'm going to ask you to stand so that they know who you are. I'm already standing. I'm Greg Jones. I'm a, a member of the board, and I'm the team lead for the advanced uh, Druid Hills planning team. Bruce Cox. Bruce is the treasurer, and he's on the team uh, as a member. Uh, Jeff Houston. He's our director of golf, and uh, he's on the team. Mike Johnson. Michael is, uh, is the chairperson for the golf committee of the uh, board, and uh, he's on the, on the meeting uh, or on the team as well. Dave Miser. I have to always spell this one out. We used to call it MCPC, and everybody asked me what MCPC stood for, so we spelled it out, Major Capital Projects Committee. This is the group that, by and large, when we have a large project that we're doing here in the Glade, they manage it on our behalf. They're kind of like our owner's engineer, I'd call them. So uh, he plays a very important role in terms of getting the right people in the construction and getting us through the project once we decide what we're going to do. And then Bob Weber. Bob's the general manager of the club and uh, is on the team as well. You're going to have to keep hitting it for me because this ain't working. All right. So first thing we want to do just real quickly is say, what are we talking about when we talk about the Druid Hills Clubhouse area? And what we're talking about is that map there. Now, I know that that's probably like an eye test. You probably can't see that. But by and large, what it is is the building that is, is, is the Druid Hills uh, uh, Clubhouse right now, all the parking, including the tennis courts and all of that around it, and the driving range and the maintenance barn over there. So when we're talking about what we're doing there, we're not talking about the golf course. We're talking about the clubhouse and the clubhouse area. All right, here's our timeline. So we're, we, we've had a couple of opportunities to talk to the golf league uh, folks. We've had an opportunity at the annual meeting to get inputs from others. This is an opportunity for others who were not able to get the inputs in at the annual meeting. Uh, to get those in and also we'll give you an email address for those of you that would like to send in something I promise you we will respond But this key part for the rest of this year is to get what we think are the core requirements And some of the want to haves into the hopper in terms of what people want and want would like to see over at the uh, at the uh, clubhouse so that's what we're doing here and we're also trying to resolve a couple issues uh, that we need to get taken care of before we can even decide what we might want to do with some of the uh, areas over there. So that's this, this uh, charge right now. The first half of uh, 2022 will be really getting the, into the detailed requirements for the uh, area. Now, this is the first of what I think will be several town halls because what we want to do is keep the community involved and as we start honing down about what we think it's going to be in terms of what's going to happen at the clubhouse, we want to bring them back to you guys and have you look at it and give us your feedback and say, yeah, that, you know, that makes a lot of sense or you know, why hadn't you considered this or just whatever the conversation is going to be. Because when we look at this, this is not the committees or even the board's clubhouse, it's the communities. So we want to be attentive to make sure that we're listening to what you have to say and what it is that you like or dislike about what we're thinking about. Because now is the time for us to do it before we start doing something, and then it's too late. So this will just be a series of things that we're going to do, and we'll use other venues. Uh, we probably will do a survey at some point. We, we are, have an email that's open so you can give us feedback and that type of thing. So we want you engaged. Still, still can't hear you? Oh, okay. All right, so second half of uh, 2022 will be all about getting those requirements down and getting the uh, actual construction started or, or remodeling, whatever it is we're going to do over there. Okay, next one. Then in 2023 is when we actually plan on starting building, and uh, that will start hopefully right at the first of the year in 2023. And then that'll be the completion of phase one will be sometime in 2023 or early 2024, depending on the extent of what we're going to do. And then there'll probably be a phase two. Uh, because when we take a look at that area, depending on what we do with the building or if it's a new building, 
that will dictate a lot about what we're going to have to do in terms of parking and things like that during either construction or remodeling. So we're going to have to do a couple phases with this then. All right, next one. All right, so what the committee has done is said these are the core requirements. There are certain things that we know we must have when we talk about the clubhouse. So the things that are must-haves are the golf shop. We have to have a home for the central tea time. That's housed over at Druid Hills currently. We need an office for the director of golf. Uh, we want to do a centralized receiving for all golf-related goods and equipment. And then finally, there'll be food and beverage service for golfers. And we'll get into more of that in a minute. You'll see some other comments we've gotten. Okay, next. There's two question, questions that we're really after, and I mean both of these have equal weight. <clears throat> There's a question about what we want to have in there that's above and beyond the core requirements. But to me, what's even more important is what will the community support? We're not into trying to do something over there that everyone says we're not going to, we won't support that, nor would we think about doing something, well, I want that, but there's no support for it. So the support question is just as big of a, of a question for us. Otherwise, what we start dealing with, and some of you lived through this, if you were around here, around 2016, that type of thing, with subsidies and that type of thing, and we, we really want to be mindful of that. So we really want to have both of these questions answered. What is it we want? and what will the community support. So here's some things that we've already heard <coughs> through the different venues. And we've added on to this. Those of you that saw this at the annual meeting, we've added some other things on. We consolidate them just so that you get an idea of, of what people are saying. So uh, on the uh, golf end, we've said, seen things like dedicated uh, short game area. We've seen things like golf training center, large putting green, covered hitting bays similar to Top Golf. Space for tournaments, 100 to 150 inside and outside. Uh, short course, indoor short game area, and large driving range tees. Have front and back nine become the, uh, the back nine and back nine become the front nine. And a training facility or short game area will not be used. And what, what I'm trying to show you here is we're looking for all inputs. We're not just looking for, oh yeah, we, we, you know, this is the positive thing. If there's negatives you see, we want to hear those as well. So they're equally important. Okay, go on. All right, some things that we've already heard about in food and beverage. Sports bar with later hours, minimums for dining, full service restaurant, serve breakfast, larger bar area with full bar, separate space for golfers, a seasonal restaurant, outside vendor or third party run the operation, Irish pub, quality fine dining experience, consider interim solutions while we're planning and building what we're going to do or remodeling over there. Next one. Okay. Demolish the clubhouse and move location. Have space for special events like pasta night, Thanksgiving, Easter, etc. Space for meetings and cards. Just revamp Legends and Fireside. Reopen Legends and Fireside. Make something similar to Legends and Fire uh, to Legends, I mean. Flexible setup for multiple room configurations. Just do a clone of Dorchester. Uh, have a room for a dance floor. Make the building a two-story building to create better views. Don't make, need to do anything waste of money. Bulldoze all the Druid and start all over. They wanted the golf course gone too. So <laughs> that's obviously somebody who's played it before. Uh, so again, there's a wide range. Now, now what our plan is, is to do this, to try to get these things sorted out, is get all the inputs and then we are going to have committees of residents, not board members will be involved and and the, the director of golf will be involved and other people like that. But there'll be mainly residents, community people that'll be on there that'll help us sort through this. So when we start getting those things formed now, what we'll use heavily is the one Michael chairs is the golf committee for the golf related stuff. There's no need for us to go out and get another whole committee for that because we already have one set up. But when we start talking about some of the other areas, we like very likely might have other committees that we will form. All right, next one. So what we're asking from you as well today is to get your comments is we'd like to know, is this the good way to approach it? Are there other ways that you can think of that we can get you engaged better? Uh, and we really are interested in your ideas, your questions, your comments. That's what we're here for, okay? And then finally, I think the last one here, we'll leave this one up. <clears throat> this is the email that you can contact us 
And again, I promise you, you will get an answer. Uh, sometimes the answer will be, uh, we'll pass it on, uh, that kind of thing to the committee, but we will make sure that you, you know uh, that, you, that, your, that your, your response was read and that in fact where was, what we're going to do with it. Now, a couple things have happened since all of this has happened, and I'll, I'll at least anyway make mention of a couple of them. You probably know some of them if you get the e-blast. In terms of where we're going to do some things in terms of post, I mean, uh, special events and theme nights, there was an email that went out last week that addressed what we're going to try to do at Stonehenge and at the center to help address some of those issues. And that's coming from the board, uh, and that's what we're planning on doing. So if you have comments about that, we'll listen to them. But by and large, we're not going to make much headway with that today because this is really around Druid. So if you haven't seen that email, make sure that you, you can come up afterwards and we'll go over what's in it or whatever you want to know about it. But, but please read that because it's a plan of what we're going to do to try to address some of the concerns people have raised in the short term, and then we'll see where we are with the long term, okay? With that in mind, there's, there's a microphone over here and there's one over there. And like I said, if you need to uh, come up or you can't get up or something, please let us know. But start lining up now and we want to hear your comments, questions, concerns, whatever you got. Craig, good afternoon. My name is David Bain. Thank you for doing what you're doing and the rest of the committee. We really appreciate it and getting the community involved. My question is, have you guys started out with some kind of budget and uh, are looking for a certain term of, I'll not call it payback, but some kind of annual uh, annualization of what these costs and the budget are going to be? Bruce, I'm going to let you handle that one. Uh, what we have in the budget, you'll see at the budget presentation, is we have money in the budget for next year to do the planning that Greg talks about, uh, hiring some consultants on the layout of the land along with some engineering work to be done. Beyond that, we have an estimate, uh, a really rough estimate, of about $3 million that we think is going to take to either revamp or build a new clubhouse, but that, that could change dramatically. And so until we get some better idea of what we're doing, it's hard to put dollars around it. So next year, part of the uh, plan is for us to put that kind of thing together and then forecast that for 23, 24, 25 kind of time frame. The, the thing I keep telling people is <coughs> Druid Hills Clubhouse has been there for 50 years. Um, that's a testament to what, what it's been able to do. So what we want to make sure whatever we do there is it's going to be a long-term solution. We don't want to be coming back two or three years from now and say, well, boy, I wish we would have done this. So we're going to try to be very careful about the requirements, what, what we see as requirements, and make sure that the budget fits what we need to do with those. Okay? Yeah. My name's Heather Ostrander. And um, first, again, thank you for all you do. Thank you for being willing to take this on. And thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, first comment, this is going to take way too long. I mean, we're talking 2024 when we're finishing this up. Um, <clears throat> I think that's going to be a little bit too long. I have a couple of questions for the group here, and that is, first of all, who here is a golfer? Who, who are who, golfers? Who here is a golfer? Okay. Who here likes to go out to eat? I think that tells you where we're coming from. Um, the emphasis seems to be placed on golf and golf only. We're not seeing anything for food and beverage, at least not in the first five steps that you showed there. The median household income in Cumberland County is higher than the median household income in Putnam. And if you go over to Cookville, you know what you've got for food and beverage. And I think what we saw at Casa Grande on Peavine has been a big smack upside the head because that place has been mobbed ever since it opened and they don't even have a liquor license. So I think there's an opportunity for us to have 
more and better food and beverage service here and have it quickly, not wait until 2024 to complete things. Is the general public welcome at our facilities? Do you have to be a member or accompanied by a member? No, there's no restrictions. Okay, so why couldn't we appeal to a broader range if we're concerned about getting enough support for the, for the restaurants? The demographics in Fairfield Glade have changed even since we moved here three years ago, and we see them continuing to change. And I think the people who are coming in here are really looking for some good food and beverage opportunities. And they don't have to be high priced, they don't have to be really upscale, but golly, at Legends, we had a really good facility, and we'd like it back. And before 2024 is really important, too. So I'll leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Go over my here. Name, my name is Mark Cumbo. Um, I wondered on your core requirements, it doesn't say if the existing facility is short on space or if there's enough space to meet the core requirements in the building. So if you could kind of publish the core criteria and uh, assess it or some assessment on the existing square footage and space. The other thing, similar to the comments that were just made, I think there's an identity crisis. You've got to decide whether or not for that area you've got a golf facility that you're looking on enhancing and making a better golf environment. Or there's obviously, I, I think shared with the whole room, the whole food and beverage there's a big need for that, but if you separate the two, are you, are you at risk for not having one or the other? So I'd like to see the committee and the planning make sure that they identify their identity in terms of what they're trying to accomplish and either split those two out so they're not competing and split the budget as well, or be more transparent with what the criteria is for how the core needs are being met as well as each side of that, because if you're looking at enhancing the golf course, obviously you don't want to waste the whole meeting on food and beverage and vice versa, but there's clearly a shortage in food and beverage. Okay. Uh, part, part of that I'm going to have Dave come up uh, because you asked a question about the assessment of the building, and we do have one of those, and I'll let Dave kind of speak to that. Okay. <laughs> so, as Greg has already said, this is the oldest building we have. It's a landmark, that's right. It was also done in about five different stages. And so we've got a hodgepodge of cobbled together building here that may work and may not work. And until we really figure out what we want to put in that building. We don't know if it's going to work or not. The other thing that's out there is in the land planning, are we going to put the new building where it is currently, or are we going to move it to make better use of the land? We do know that there are issues with the existing building. And so is it cheaper to demolish it and start over or try to modify it? Oftentimes, if you get into modifications, it costs more than starting over again. So until we have more knowledge of exactly what we want, I can't answer it any further than that. I threatened Dave that I'd get him up here, and by golly, you, thanks for that question, so we got him up there. But uh, what he said is really important for us to understand because we do have an assessment that was done. It was actually done in 2012, right? And we are going through that, and that's going to have to be a factor in the sausage making of what we do, but we haven't drawn any conclusions to that because without the requirements, we don't know. So uh, when we keep saying we don't know, it's because we're trying to get what the requirements are and what the community wants and not just do something that we think is best. Uh, okay. 
Hi, my name is Norm Semple. I got up and spoke at the annual meeting. Uh, one of the subjects at that time was there didn't appear to be anybody on the committee that was not a golfer. And it was said that there was going to be additional people added with different views. I do not see that happening yet. We have not formed the committees yet. That has not happened. The only well, I'm talking, you're talking about, the, I'm talking about the one that directs the whole thing. It's nothing but golfers. Well, right now, this is what we're calling the Advanced Planning Committee. Okay. Which is all golfers. Well, I, I'm a golfer, but I also eat. That's not I, what I was said anything. at the, that was not what was said at the, whole, at the meeting for the entire community. There said there would be people added to that list. And the intention for that was at the committee level where the real detail That's was not what was do. said, sir. Well, maybe I'm, uh, I'll say, maybe I misspoke, but the intention is, is to get people involved at the committee level because that's where the real work's gonna be done. So there will be additional people that will be involved. We haven't formed those well, But you haven't yet. changed anybody in the oversight of all those committees. They're still all golfers. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss that, that's fair. And what will happen, anything? Well, we'll, we'll have a conversation about that. Okay, and going to the building, I appreciate the evaluation of the building, but we'd be in pretty much trouble around here if we tore down and got rid of everybody that's over 50 in here and has got crinks and crackles. <laughs> I think we'd all be gone. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> My observation would just be that the food and beverage seems to be a real issue in this whole comment. And I understand that trying to staff anything right now is virtually impossible with the labor pool we have. But that's just like saying today we have no labor pool, labor pool, so therefore we won't have one five years from now. We don't know that. So there's no plan that I could see other than a defensive commitment from the the board that we can't hire anybody, so we basically shouldn't really do anything more to avoid uh, approve of food and beverage. And I, for one, have followed Mr. Weber's suggestion of going to Stonehenge after seven o'clock because nobody's using it then and been faced with an hour wait to sit in line. And when you have 72 tables or chairs for 4,000 people in the community, permanent full-time people, that just doesn't work. And that would be my comment. And one issue that I brought up at the other was some ways to generate some revenue. We pay our people poorly. It may be to the scale of the community, but I also, in talking to people in the service industry, within our restaurants and our other things, quite candidly, they say the people in Fairfield Glade, many of them are too damn cheap to tip. So my comment would be add a minimum gratuity to a bill. Okay. Thank you for listening. All right. Leroy Cook, been here since 2003. The, um, at the annual meeting, I uh, learned that uh, part of the uh, facility over there is not owned by the community club. Uh, does Mr. Anderson own the driving range and the cart barn area? That's a true statement. That's one of the issues we're trying to get resolved, and we're in discussions with Mr. Anderson. I don't think that's going to be a stumbling block, but we <coughs> want that issue resolved. Okay. Well, just curious as to any progress being made yeah. to uh, purchase we've had, that? We've had conversations with him, and <coughs> what we have to figure out is there's going to have to be some trading done because there's value to that property and we want it. And quite frankly, he's willing to talk to us and, and, and we'll, we'll work something out between him and, and the association so that we can actually own that property. So there may be an initial investment right away to even get that property. I don't, I, I can't go into all that because we haven't resolved what, what we're actually gonna do, but the idea would be is we're not gonna pay dollars for it. Okay. okay? Thank you. I'm Nico, Nico Sergio, uh, 
community club member since 2005. Um, it's my understanding that there's about 5,200 uh, homes or living units here that are owned by community club members, and there's a few hundred timeshares. Um, the last I heard, there's about a 15 or 17 percent income that's generated from timeshares. So what I'm curious about is um, when we do this design, are the community club members that are full-time residents here, are they going to be able to control this? Are we going to see a lot of catering to Wyndham and the timeshares? I'm sorry. When you say patrons from timeshares, I'm not quite understanding, Nicola, what, what you're talking about. When we make a decision on what we're going to do with this new facility, mm -hmm. are the time, full time uh, residents that live here that are members of the community club, since we're generating 80, 85 percent of the revenue, are we going to have a, more of a say than the timeshares in Wyndham? That's what I want to figure out. What's okay. the relationship well, here? Let, let me address that from the standpoint. We have been over to, uh, to talk with Wyndham about what their people are seeing in terms of what they would like to maybe see in a clubhouse. But as you see, the committees that are formed, the golf committee is, how many timeshare people are on that one, Michael? How many? No, no, how many timeshare folks? None. How many people are on the advanced planning team? None. How many people are, you know, on, will likely be on other committees? Yes, we will want some input from the Wyndham group, as we will want input from our package groups, our golf package groups. But the driving force here are, are going to be the people that are sitting in this room and the community. Okay, I wanna, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to monitor that over the next two years. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Fred Maidment, and I'm a resident here at uh, Fairfield Glade. I represent a group that is trying to start a community theater here in Fairfield Glade. And uh, I gather that there is some uh, resistance to opening uh, the Legends uh, area. Uh, there is a small stage that, uh, as it led, uh, that's at uh, the Legends facility, and uh, I was wondering if there's, uh, if, there's uh, if there are any plans to uh, have a stage in any of the proposed facilities. Well, that, that's that's one that has not come up in all honesty. So uh, let's make sure we add that uh, up here on the boards. But we haven't even discussed that. Okay. Any? And I gather that there's no plans to do anything with Legends. We don't know what will happen with Legends because that's what we're trying to figure out. Do we remodel it or do we replace it? Mm -hmm. So how we answer that question is basically what are the requirements that we have for it? And a big part of that will be the condition assessment of that building right. when we really go through it. Okay. Thank you very you much. You know, one of the things that, that, and David didn't say it, but I'll say it here, is that in that assessment, when you read it, uh, you know, I'm like just like everyone else here. When I went to Legends or I went to Fireside, what did I see? I saw Fireside and I saw Legends. I didn't see the whole building. And there's other issues with that building underneath, around, in the kitchen area where people have to cook. So there's a lot more to Legends and Fireside when you talk about Druid Hills Cl Clubhouse. And that's really the, where the questions really are. Okay? okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Steve Ballou, uh, and I'm not a golfer, but I do <laughs> like to eat. So I've been, I, I'm from Tennessee, and like many, I'm actually from here. And I look at the way, way we have changed here in the past 20 years. We've been pulling back and pulling back. Used to, we had a fish fry at St. George Marina. Now it's a gutted building. All the facilities in it that don't work, we don't do anything there. We used to have a Starbucks here in this building. We used to have an art classroom here in this building. We pulled back. We don't do anything there. We've been pulling back and pulling back for 20 years. Now you're wanting us to wait two to four more years while we think about what else we're going to do next, which we just keep losing more facilities. People are coming here by the droves right now. And all we're doing is, well, that's closed. Get that email last week, and now Stonehenge is going to be closed two days a week. It's the only restaurant we got left. Unless we want to see everybody run out to Spikes and Reds, here we are. Thank you. It's me again, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm wondering if you could pull up the uh, slides that had the input from the community on the different ideas again, please. You have to go back a little bit. Okay, there you yeah. go. There, there's three of them. There's three of them, oh, okay. F and B and so if you take a look at the three, if you just bring them up quickly, let everybody have another quick look at it. All right, there's a lot of ideas there. Now, if you could go to the one that shows that your next schedule that you're talking about on your detail planning in 2022 and the like. There you go, okay, no, one more. back, one more. One more, there we go. There you go, all right. You said that you have an advanced planning committee, and in the first half of 22, you're working on detail planning for the newer remodel or whatever it might be there. Um, my question is, with all of those, I'll call them criteria, requirements, input, however you want to nomenclature them, um, it seems to me, and you're an advanced planning committee, not a planning committee, that you've got a lot of things to choose from. So the first question is, how are you going to get through all of that process and determine what you're going to do, first of all, and then secondly, you're talking about work on detail planning. De work on detail planning can't come about until you've done some kind of design development. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that, or during the course of that design development, I would encourage you to look at an option A and an option B uh, with a mix of, and myriad of different suggestions that you've had that may make sense for the community. And it seems like you're trying to finalize the scope of work in 2022 and contracting for construction real quick in 23, um, I think you need to st stand back and look at so that some of these things that you're driving forward, that you're not rushing into that those things without additional community feedback as you go through the process. And, and that's exactly the intent. So let's talk a little bit about that because this is just bullet points and it doesn't get into all the steps that we gotta go through or that we feel that we need to go through in order to make this happen. So I'll give you a, a little bit of brush on what some of that is. We hope that we will have close enough to what the major requirements are gonna be uh, by the end of the year so that we can get a master planner in here to take a look at that land mass, depending on, again, whether it's remodel or new, and we hope to get that question answered by the end of the year so that we can have them take a look at it and say, this is what your requirements are. This is what the layout of that space ought to look like. Not just the clubhouse, but all that whole space for, uh, for the Druid Hills area. So we're going to engage with professionals that do this for a living once we know what the requirements are and have them help form what that, what that best use of that space is. When we get to that point, our t intention clearly is is to then bring that back to the community in various ways. Some will be committees that we form that will be working on some of this. Some will be through town halls. Some will be through the email that we have up here. Some will be just people coming up and talking to us, you know, as individuals or whatever that means, and try to make sure that what we're talking about at that point and what we're seeing in terms of options of how that space can be used, we're getting the feedback from the community about saying, yeah, that's that's, that's what we want, or yeah, that, that makes sense, or you know, why didn't you think of this? And we're gonna to have to have answers for all of those types of questions. Because it, if, we, if we choose not to do something, we owe it to the people in this room and the people that are watching this on streaming, the people that are home and just thinking about it, to say, this is why we chose not to do this, or this is why we chose to do it. And we need to have answers to those. So people, when you say, well, gee, you're taking too long, because of the number of people and the inputs that we want from people, it's gonna take some time. Otherwise, what you're gonna get is what a committee says, well, we'll just go do that. And then we'll have a conversation about why you did it. <laughs> and I don't wanna go there. <laughs> so it's gonna take some time for us to engage with the community and get options out there, talk about what those options are, get feedback from what those options are, and make decisions along those lines. Is that Make some sense to you? That's the logical approach. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My name's Tom Bonine, and I'm a, a new resident here. I've been here a little over two years. And 
one of the things based on the response to Heather's question, how many people like to eat out, that kind of tells you that you need not only we have a flagship golf course here in Stonehenge, you better get a flagship restaurant to go along with it. There's no doubt about that. Um, I, I want to ask, do we have any Illinois people in here? Uh, if you don't want to admit it, it's okay. Raise it your hand quickly. Um, do we have any Illinois people here? Okay. I'm, I'm glad you got out safe like I did. <laughs> Are you, uh, um, you might be familiar with a resort in the northwest corner of Illinois called Eagle Ridge. It's a lot like Fairfield Glade except it doesn't have the mountains, but it's got seven restaurants, a large retirement community, and three golf courses. And one, I'm fortunate enough to have a very close friend who owns that. And I talked with him bef uh, last week, anticipating being here, and I told him about the issues that you've had in unsuccessfully running the food and beverage here. And I told him about the situation at Legends. You've got this beautiful facility, and it's standing empty. There's no income coming in. How do you rectify that? And he suggested, and it's one of the uh, uh, bullet points that was on your, your presentation, if, if you want to get some income from it, lease it out to somebody who knows what the hell they're doing and how to run a restaurant. <laughs> do your due diligence, do your proper vetting, and turn the guy loose. He knows how to overcome the labor situation. There's, that's their business. And at least you got some income coming in from the place, and who knows, you might get a lot of people coming here that formerly weren't coming here because there was no place to come. So I would put that as one of your top priorities. Because if you don't, you're spinning your wheels uh, in, in one of the major issues that is uh, confronting all of us, and that's to just have a beautiful place to go out and take your families, go out and uh, uh, have a, a nice uh, dinner on, on holidays, uh, let alone on the weekends. And when you have the golf tournaments and you have a lot of people coming in here, <laughs> I'm sorry, Stonehenge Grill is nice, but it doesn't cut it. Okay? So that's all. I Thank you. Say. Thank you. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but... <laughs> but you will. <laughs> I, I am probably in part, depending on your perspective, um, I don't believe in analysis paralysis from the standpoint of, you know, looking at things for the next six months and then the advanced planning group, you know, stepping in from that standpoint. But the flip side of that is if the advanced planning group doesn't have a strategic direction with criteria with how they're going to get through those choices, then the trade-offs are going to be worthless because the decision making and the criteria weren't clearly established to know if your success factors are really in place. And, you know, the, the comments were made about food and beverage being closed two days a week, and I think everybody would agree Stonehenge doesn't have enough seating capacity, and if you're going to spend millions of dollars on a re renovation, but you don't have the capacity to keep people in the room to generate more revenue, you're losing. So if you look at that building site and what you're going to do from a food and beverage standpoint, but you don't have enough seating capacity, you don't have enough room to deal with that, and you get caught in a trade-off with what you want to do for a fixed budget and the golf side, no matter what the advanced planning does before the ground breaks, you're going to lose. So I, I would strongly encourage you to look at your strategic direction of do you want to be in food and beverage, what's your criteria, and obviously from the feedback you've been given, Everybody would like a shorter response time than two years away to address those things, independent of, sure, it would be great to have another golf facility that was top in and draw additional people in, but you're, you're at conflict, you're at odds, and saying that you're going to decide by January and looking at it from an advanced planning committee and having all the other subgroups isn't going to get you closer to a decision unless you've got somebody strategically saying, Yes, 10 years from now, we want to be in food and beverage. We want to draw people in with that part of the community, as well as with golf. If you don't have that, you're going to lose no matter what you do. Yeah, and, and uh, what I will tell you is, is that I appreciate those comments because they're very, they're very true. So you're not beating a dead horse. You're actually beating 
the right horse. <laughs> so <clears throat> what, what I would tell you is, is that one of the things that, that probably Druid Hills will not be, the clubhouse, will be everything for everybody, okay? There are other conversations going on. This committee is focused on Druid Hills Clubhouse and what it will do. So to your point, the questions that you're asking, there, there's been a lot of discussion about that. And there's, there's direction that we, we plan on going. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. But the flip side of that is you're looking at the, the total ground area. So if it's two acres, five acres, whatever it is, I, I don't know where the decision goes back to how much of it's golf versus can it be used for another alternative. So a, as you look at that, make sure whatever that criteria is again, make sure you stick to that and it's mm -hmm. clear what the priorities are and if there's another area or lots available to do the food and beverage and make sure the, there's a distinction. That's why I mentioned er, earlier, split the budget and make sure it's clear that you're addressing both if you want to be in that business, but I, I think based on the feedback in the room, you, you already know if you wait for another four years to do food and beverage because you did a phase one, phase two around the golf, and you, you're not winning there with the community. Okay, thank you. Hi, first I wanted to thank you Greg, and thank you for having this venue for us residents to speak. Oh gosh, well, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> All right, I thanked the opportunity to be here. It means a lot. So I'm Jeannie Bosley, and I'm speaking for my family and friends who could not be here today. Like many people who spoke at the um, yearly meeting, and he, he even here tonight, Having a dining venue such as Legends and Fireside restaurants were one of the main reasons we decided to move to Fairfield Glade. A large, beautiful space to come together for meals, socializing, and many, many other functions and special events and activities. I don't see it here, the flag today, but I would like to reference the Fairfield Glade's very own mission statement. The Fairfield Glade Community Club will continuously improve the resort lifestyle experience while fostering and promoting a strong sense of community. The five years that we have lived here, Legends was the essence of community in Fairfield Glade and has been for over 40 years, I guess 50 now. There's been hundreds of events held at that large, lovely space. We as our entire country desperately need to come back to a sense of community, to be united in community, fellowship, and friendship. We feel that Legends, or a similar dining venue perhaps, needs to be open and continue to serve the hundreds of residents that want to come back to and engage in that strong sense of community once again. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> come up there since I'm so little and no one will see me. Come on up. <laughs> I'm little and I'm old. Okay, my name's Candace Corcoran. Now look around. Look at your neighbor. Look who's next to you. And what I see here are antique little boys and little girls. We love sports. We love going out for dinner. We love to meet new people. Our age is only a number, and I think the board is forgetting that. They see us as old people. There are hundreds of folks that want a second restaurant and will support it. We miss and we want fireside and legends. The convenience of staying on site. We miss a quiet date night to mingle and meet new friends. Sports, um, Stonehenge is only a sports bar as far as I'm concerned. When a second restaurant is developed, it should have limited hours and a limited menu and have reservations. So you're not standing online for two hours, an hour and a half, and wondering if you're even going to get in. The restaurant could be at St. George or Darthmore Marina's. What would be nicer than waterfront property? 
or enclose one of the golf course facilities. As far as Druid, keep it or rebuild with a restaurant and a ballroom that will be the envy of Crossville. With proper marketing, and that's where we're not going out to Crossville, with proper marketing, this ballroom will be the place to go for weddings, events, and a great revenue source. Let's talk about the proposed golf facility. Did any of you walk around here and see the track man? No one's in there. No one's ever in there. What is the revenue stream from the present golf simulator? Jeff, maybe you know that? What is it? Okay, that's good. Well, I have never seen anyone in there. Check it out, okay? Are there present golf clinics? Are they well attended? keeps those revenues? Okay. This is not... My concern is that this is not Florida. Yeah, I just said, uh, this is not Florida. Oh, he, here, Jeff, come on up with me, you know me. <laughs> okay, this is not Florida. And we cannot have a facility that maintains that for 12 months. It's only gonna be an eight, nine months maybe type program. We have weather issues. Now, in the local newspapers and email blasts, you've all got these and you saw the email blast, we were told that the Food and Beverage Committee decided to close Legends and Fireside. I'm asking the board members here, who were the members of this committee that stated this? When was this decided? Do they still live in Fairfield Glade? Is this committee aware that the dynamics of Fairfield Glade has changed our age, our population, and so on? Can anyone tell me the answer to that? Okay. Anyone? Okay. These are legitimate issues to bring up, but these are issues that really should come before a board meeting, not the Druid Hills planning meeting, because it's broader perspective. If you'll give me those questions, I'll make sure that, uh, that they're addressed, okay? Okay, and my last sentence is, I was one of those members. I was thanked for my service on this now disband committee, and I have no recollection of taking a vote on the issue of closing Fireside and Legends. Anyone else? Yes. I somewhat followed that young lady's uh, question. My question was going to be is, why is Legends closed? But I'll reverse that and say, why isn't it open? Okay. Okay. There's, um, two, there's two main reasons. Let me address that right now. Because this question came up a lot in emails. And there's two main reasons why Legends is closed right now. <clears throat> One is we've taken equipment out of Legends and put it over in Stonehenge. Okay. Number two, and number two is the question about staffing. Uh, we, we have a hard enough time staffing Stonehenge at this point, and to try to do a second restaurant at this point would be very difficult. You know, um, when, they did, when they did the tennis uh, building, 
they kept the tennis building open. When they did the Grove, they kept the other venue open. I've worked in projects where the building stays open until the night before the bulldozer gets there. It can be done, and I don't understand why you expect us to wait three years when you have a very good building sitting there that's, due, that's usable, and obviously people want it used. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks, Greg, for having the town halls. A um, couple comments. Number one, I, I agree with those that have echoed the idea that we've got to have another restaurant. <laughs> we, we just can't, so I'll, I'll leave that at that. But has any thought been given to when we think about building a new building, doing something with multi-levels? It's cheaper to build up. We could do a lot more. We have a contour of the land out there that offers a lot of opportunities where possibly a building could be positioned so that the golf folks could enter maybe on a top floor, level with the golf course, pro shops, golf offices, those type of things, where the bottom floor could be restaurant, community places for us. And I haven't heard it mentioned, didn't know. Well, it, it's in the comments here. We have received comments about Four. doing a multi-level. Okay. Uh, we haven't you know, obviously gone through all of that yet. There's questions even about the land uh, what kind of building, if we were to rebuild, uh, what that what the land will allow us? Do we need some professional help on that? Okay. But yeah, they're very much in the in the mix. Okay. One last comment. Yeah. Um, we keep talking about the labor shortages and whatnot, and I understand that's a real deal out everywhere right now. But he, prior to the pandemic, we still had labor issues in the restaurants here. And having been in that industry for over 20 years, I'm here to tell you, it's management. Good businesses keep their people. If you go in town, you will never find a Chick-fil-A that's not fully staffed and clean. But you can go to others that are poorly managed, and it, it's by chain pretty much, and you can pretty much know it's going to be dirty, poorly staffed, help wanted signs on the windows. And every time I see a help wanted sign, my first reaction is bad management. And I don't know what the solution is here, because obviously I guess you got to bring people in from Crossville to get them here. but. There's got to be an answer. That's all. Okay. Yes, my name is Tom Parker. Um, two things. One, I'll kind of follow up with what he was saying. Uh, Fireside was remodeled three and a half, four years ago for tens of thousands of dollars to remodel that. It did very well, and, it's, and it could have stayed open even though Legends was closed. All it would need is five people. This could be turned over to somebody who does that for a business, in a restaurateur, it could make a profit. Second, the other thing I wanted to bring up you said it, the building is 50 years old. That's a new building. I've been in construction management <clears throat> and engineering all my life. Working on buildings hundreds of years old, still to remodel. It can be done. I don't see any reason to tear it down. Like you said, there's it's kind of a, a jumbled add-ons over the years, but that can be reconciled. Yeah, we again, we have not made those decisions yet, and they will be looked at. I think a lot of it's going to be depending on the assessment of the building that we have and what, what the professionals tell us we're going to have to do. And of course, the other piece of it is what the requirements are going to be. How do you do? My name is Susie Rhodes. I've only been here four years, so I don't know an, or understand why Legends was closed, but I feel it was, I feel it was staffing in issues, and all the places around town in Crossville, Cookville, even Knoxville, do have employee, employment issues. Um, an idea I just wanna throw out uh, I don't know how it's done, but 
Uh, you can bring in people from the Dominican Republic, Jamaica. You need to house them, but they are great workers. I've seen them at many facilities, and it's just a comment that I wanted to make or an idea to throw out. Okay. Uh, a lot of been a lot of information has been talked about the uh, availability of labor shortages and things like that. And one thing that has come to mind, I think everybody has seen this, that Bucky's is coming into Crossville. They don't just put their building in any place. They analyze. They they know how many people they need. They're going to be paying them a lot of money. Now, have the board or anybody? made any decisions on how they're going to staff this new building or this renovated building once it gets underway. Because if you don't have anybody to staff it, you've got an empty building because nobody's coming in and nobody's working there. Well, the whole conversation around Bucky's, obviously I don't know anyone in the restaurant business or in the service business that's not having that conversation, including ourselves. So in terms of how we're staffing it or how we would staff it, that will be a big part of the conversation in terms of moving forward once we know what it's going to be. But you're absolutely right. We, if we're going to have a building or, or we even remodel what we have, we got to staff it, correct. Absolutely. Are we done? Oh. <laughs> But here, hold on. Maybe I can get the mic to you. Yep. Wait till you read 89. You'll see if you walk over that good. Uh, I was just going to ask you, you know, uh, Peavine Road is going to be building a lot of stuff on there. You can see it now. There'll be more restaurants that will, will want to come in there. And com uh, competition is going to be great. And I'm sure you don't want to build a restaurant here if we can't support it, and there'll be more money going down the drain. This almost has to be a sure thing, though, before you even think of doing it. Because it's building, I, I, I'm telling you, it took, well, I don't know how many years to build this road, but finally they got it done. Well, none of us know what's going to happen with Peavine. Uh, although we've seen at least one restaurant come in there, right? So we do know that, that some, some things are going to happen there for sure. Uh, and we do not want to, we, we have to be mindful of the competition. So we're, we're mindful of that no matter what we're going to do. But the fact of the matter is, is that it comes back to the community. It comes back to us. What are we going to support? It, that's, what, that's what the question is going to have to be. And we're going to have to see exactly what we're willing to do to support it. You know, uh, without getting into all the rigmarole, uh, but it, it, one of the things that the community was very strong on, or at least there was a vocal part of it five or six years ago, long before I got involved with all this, was the subsidies that were going to food and beverage. The community said, no, we don't want that. Well, that's why we're taking the time to get the requirements now and asking what we will support, because we do want to revisit that. So, you know, we have the opportunity. if if we are going to support it to see other things happen. But we have to do our part too. And that, that's, that's going to have to be some part of the mix here. Thank you. Hope your knee's better. I got a back issue, so I know exactly what you're dealing with. OK, anyone else? Yeah. Hi, my name is Stu Napier. I've been here about three and a half years with my wife. Um, there's a three things or four things uh, first. It's been mentioned, and you brought it up, that there are some other planning ideas. And I think it's important for the board to let the community know kind of what the general long, long short-range vision is for the community and not just for Druid Hills, because we have a center, we have other space, um, we have Mr. Anderson with the, the mall. There's a lot of po potential possibilities, and I understand that uh, there's a lot of things that are being thought about, and I understand that you released, you know, your, your, your sort of short-term plan. Appreciate that. Um, second, I think that the 
Um, I'm so just trying to lose my thought here. Um, the issue with um, committees, when are you planning to put out a request for members to these committees? Well, let's, let's be specific, specific about part of that. There will probably no be, be no request for additional golf committee members because we have that committee. But the other committees you talked about. The other committees, as soon as we formulate which ones they're going to be, we're going to get it out there because we need them involved. Okay. Third, third off of that, there are many members in this community that go in other places during the winter. And I think that part of the process that you need to bring in is uh, telecommunications and things like that. So people who are not here, away for holidays, whatever, if you need to have a meeting, which you will obviously to, to continue to be on schedule, um, that there's ways to do that through uh, you know, streaming and things like that, which I know you're dealing with. We're here. doing today. And, right. and matter of fact, uh, that's becoming kind of a mantra for all of our major meetings now that those will be streamed so people can see them wherever they are. Right, but this is more, uh, more communication back yeah. and forth where it could be communication versus yeah. just streaming. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Anyone else? Oh, all right. Yeah, hi, my name is Denise Voss. I moved here a little over two years ago. And I'm not a good speaker, so I apologize. And my thoughts are jumbled. I didn't plan on speaking. But one of the points that my husband and I notice a lot is that we have a lot of visitors that come here. And they come here for uh, the golf and the having a good time. And we talked to him, we have talked to him over the last few years in a lot of bars in the area, <laughs> sorry. But their biggest complaint is there's no place to eat. Where can we go to eat? The restaurants are all closed. I don't want to drive all the way to downtown Crossville and drink because they don't want to drink and drive, which is commendable. Even the other day, I, there was a group of guys, there were eight of them, they were visiting, they were play, playing 36 at Stonehenge, and they couldn't get lunch in between. So they were running to another restaurant down the street to quick grab a sandwich and get back to Stonehenge. That's ridiculous. They're not going to come and pay those crazy prices if they can't get something to eat. If they can't get a hot dog, that's... So Stonehenge is not taking the Stonehenge restaurant is not taking the place of Legends or Fireside because you can't always get served there. You can't even always get a table to sit down and have a beer after golf. It's too small. So okay. my two cents. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Chuck Lehman. I've been here about five years. Um, I'm listening to some of the discussions, and I'm sensitive to some of your concerns about subsidizing food and beverage, and also your concerns about support. Uh, so I think one of the things I would recommend is you seek uh, some indications of support from uh, the people in the community. And one of the things I would recommend is to, to take the pressure off of the subsidy, is to make it a, a true amenity. You can get an annual golf pass for about $2,000 a year. I'm willing to spend $2,000 a year on food and beverage. I'm willing to commit to that. I bet a lot of people would too. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, uh, we appreciate all of you coming and staying and, and the dialogue that we've had. I hope you found it enlightening too. I know I have. Uh, please take the email address if you think of something later. Don't be bashful about writing. We'll make sure we, we answer your questions.